What's up my friends, EasyBot here, and in front of us today we have the Electron Model Cycles, which is Electron's six track FM groove box that uses the same synthesizer engine as the Electron Digitone, so a four operator FM synth engine. We're gonna make a pattern together, and I'm gonna do this as quickly as I possibly can and try and highlight as many features as I can as we make this pattern, but I want this to be short so that you can get started making music as quickly as possible. Let's start a new project. Let's hit the wrench here, go to project, grab a blank space here, press down on the blue encoder, and hit load. If you're coming from the presets, you don't need to save it, so just go right into it, initializing a pattern. Excellent. Press this if you want to get out of that menu. This is your back button here. The model cycle sports six tracks with six different kinds of instruments that you can have on those tracks. And each one of those instruments uses the model cycles FM engine in a different way using four macro controls. A macro control means one encoder sends information to many different destinations. So you get some very wide adjustments with just a small turn of one of these four macro controls. Now each one of the tracks on the model cycles has an LFO. Each one of them can be a different track length and each one of them can have multiple instruments laid across its tracks, but only one can be a default sound on that track. So for the first instrument, I'm gonna grab the kick drum, which by default will be on track one. And I can audition it on this velocity sensitive pad. These six pads are all velocity sensitive. These pads below are not. So these pads act as your keyboard and also as your step sequencer, as you can see. So let's go over to track one and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a couple of kicks down, just some random kicks and get some sounds going. Now, if we wanna change the default sound on track one, I can either change the machine by pressing this instrument button here and adjusting it with the blue encoder, or I can hold function and hit that machine and go into presets. So I can go to the factory content here, go into BD for bass drum, and I can audition those sounds with the trackpad, and then move through here. And when I like something like this, I just press down on the blue encoder, and now track one has this bass drum preset. I'll press back to get out of here. It's significantly louder, so I'm actually going to turn the volume down so I can adjust it here with the volume knob. It's up real high. I think the reason that was up so high actually is because the louder that you turn the volume up on the tracks, not the track level, but the actual volume of the instruments, you start to get distortion, which is why it says volume plus distortion. And when you turn it, you see this sine wave, it starts to get more square and more rigid in its waveform. Let's bring it back down, take it at about 70. So now we have these kick drums here. I'll just let this pattern play and I'll adjust these parameters. And look for something that I like. So I was saying there's four macro controls. That's sweep, contour, color, and shape. These four macro controls are different for each of the six instruments in the model cycles. So keep that in mind. If you wanna know what they do exactly, you're gonna to have to look in the instruction booklet. And even in there, it's still a little vague because the controls that it's controlling or the macro controls that are happening inside the software are actually pretty complex. Okay, enough of that, back to our kick drum. So if we want to change the pitch of our kick drum, we could alter it with the pitch knob here, which allows us to change things by micro tuning. If I hold function, it'll move by whole numbers. But this is a fine tuned pitch, which is good for the kick drum, but maybe not so good for melodic stuff. So if we want to change this in a melodic fashion, we would hold down a step and turn the blue encoder. And you can see here it's highlighted on these notes. I can change it from a C5 to a B4 or a C sharp 5, so on and so forth. If I press down on the encoder again, it moves me over to the velocity. And the velocity by default is routed to the volume, but you can actually route the velocity to any destination on the model cycles. So it's a really powerful sound sculpting tool. That in combination with the pads means if I put more pressure on the pad or I hit the pad harder, I could make a sound either be softer, more abrasive, change the pitch, give it reverb or delay. There's lots of stuff you can do. 
but we're not going into that in this tutorial. So I'm going to press down on the encoder again, and this allows me to adjust the length of this step. So if I wanted this kick drum to be four steps long, it wouldn't do anything because this envelope on it is a decay envelope. But if I was to press this button and then change the length to say four steps, this kick drum would now play for four steps. You can hear that the kick drum might also make a good bass synthesizer as well. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go back to this regular kick drum sound. Let's go over to our snare track. What I wanna do here on the snare track is I actually want to just put in some simple, a uh, simple snare pattern, five and 13. This is a pretty basic pattern for a snare. Okay, but I wanna put some more steps down. I'm gonna start with this step. I'm gonna hold down the chance knob and turn it until it says fill. And then I'm gonna copy this step. You hold down the step and hit the record button, which doubles as the copy button. And then I'm gonna paste it down by hitting the stop button after I've placed my finger down on another step in the sequence. And I'm gonna paste these steps down. So now what I've created is a drum fill pattern, which I activate by pressing the page button. You can see it says fill underneath it. Cool, and that's a cool feature and that's fun to do live. Now, if I wanna change the length of these patterns, say I want this snare track to be 32 steps long so I can add more variations, or I want my kick drum track to only be eight steps, or say I want a melodic track to be 64 steps, which would make a lot of sense if you're writing something a little bit more complex. We would hold function and hit the page button, and this takes you into your scale setup. And I actually like it at 16 steps with the snare track. I'm not gonna adjust it because it works just fine. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna press down on the blue encoder and make the mod or mode say track. What this means is that now all of these tracks are gonna have their own scaling. So my kick drum track could be eight steps long and another track could be 16 and so on and so forth. Before it was set at global level. So whatever I changed here changed all the tracks the same way. So here I can make the track longer or I can change the scale of the track, but we're not gonna mess with that right now. I'm gonna go down to change and I'm actually gonna change it. If I push down on the blue encoder and turn it, it moves in steps of 16, which is helpful. I'm gonna change this to 64 steps, which is four bars. So a very basic way to use a groove box or a drum machine and a very effective way as well. So I'm gonna get out of here. And now the master change for my tracks, for my, all of my tracks, cause that's on a global level, is at 64 steps. So no matter what, at 64 steps, my pattern will return to step one. To adjust the panning of a track, hold function and turn the blue encoder. We're gonna have a little bit of fun here on the hi-hat track. So I'm gonna go into step edit here and let's just put down a couple of hats, a couple of random spots here. On this last one here, I want this one to do a ratchet or a roll. So I hold this down, I press the retrig button, press it again, and that turns it on. So now we have these different parameters in the retrig menu that we can adjust, but we're gonna go down to fade here, and I'm gonna turn this all the way to negative, which means that this roll is gonna roll for four steps in length, so it'll roll all the way to step one here, actually. But on the last one, the volume is gonna be all the way down to to zero, so no volume at the very end of the roll. It actually sounds really great on your hi-hats. But I'm gonna make it so that this one doesn't go for four steps. I'm gonna change it to three steps. There we go, so I want it on three. Cool. Now another thing I want is that I want this one to not happen all the time. I don't want this roll to always occur. So I'm gonna use the chance knob here, and I'm gonna change it to two of two. So what two of two means, and this menu is where your conditional trigs are. So that's one of the huge things about electron gear and why people love it so much and why I love it so much is that you can do these really interesting things to your patterns using conditional triggers or percentages and play if this happens or don't play if this happens, those kind of conditions. We're not gonna go deep into conditional trigs right here because we just wanna get making music. But I wanna show you that on two of two, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna pass over this trigger one time, and then on the second pass, it's going to let this trigger play. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Can you hear that? It rolled off, and the, vo the velocity rolled off at the end. Actually sounds really nice. 
Now, if I wanted to accent some of these hats, I can use this punch right here. And what this is like a pseudo compression, but it really works very well as an accent. But if you want something to sound a little more abrasive, go ahead and turn that sucker on. So let's go ahead and throw down another hat, give it a punch, throw down a hat and give it a punch. Let's just hear how that sounds. I dig it, our pattern's coming along. Okay, let's carry on. So one thing I wanna bring up while we're here and we have like an actual drum beat is what tempo do we want? Right now by default, we're at 120, which is what happens every time you turn on a new groove box. Always at 120. Let's change it to something else. I'm gonna bring it up to 130. All right. Let's hear how it sounds at 110. Cool, I don't usually do things at 110, so I'm gonna leave it here for fun, for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go out of step edit here. We're gonna move over to track four. Track four is the percussion track, and it's actually very similar to the snare drum track in terms of the mechanics of the sound. So what I'm going to do is change the length of this pattern. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to scale it down to about nine steps. I like the idea of using odd patterns because it creates interesting rhythms. So now I'm going to leave this menu. I'm going to place down a couple of trigs and space them out from each other. Maybe I'll put an extra one there and put a trig condition on it. Now that sound is too bassy for me. So I don't want to use it. What I do want to do is find another one that will fit in the percussion track. I'm going to go to the factory settings here and let's try PC. I like PC blocks. That sounds cool. I'm going to lock PC blocks to this trigger. Let's find another one. How about clappy? I'll lock that to this trigger. I like cork, I like the stereoness that's happening here. So I'll lock it to this one. All right, let's check it out. I'm gonna turn this track down by turning the blue encoder. Cool, I'm digging it so far. Now I wanna bring up temporary saves and reloading of temporary saves and how useful they are in the Electron workflow and how you can use them to save your butt all the time. So if I hold function and hit the settings key here, it says pattern save to a temporary area. Okay, so what this means is now I can make any adjustment I want. In fact, if I hold track and turn any of these knobs here, it'll adjust all the tracks that we've worked on so far. So I've just turned the sweep all the way up I'll turn the decay up. I'll turn the pitch all the way up. And now we can hear what our track sounds like. It's gonna sound nuts because all four of these instruments that we've placed down now all have that huge adjustment done to their tracks. That sounds totally insane. I don't want that. It's like I made a mistake. How do I fix this mistake? Hold function and hit pattern. Now we're back to that temporary spot we were in. Now, that's really cool, but how do you use it in a performance? Like this. So I have my temporary save state already done. You do it live. So you find some parameters that you know are fun to adjust with the control all function, which again says right down below track here. And then you adjust that live, try and do it in time with your performance, and then at the right moment, reload the pattern. And that's a great thing to do while you're performing. And it's a good thing to do if you're gonna record your track into your computer too, because it's very real and it's organic feeling. It's something I like a lot about the model cycles and about every electron box. Okay, so let's carry on with our pattern here. Let's move over to track five. And this is our synth track or that's how I'm gonna treat it. It is the tone track, and it's a two operator FM voice. So you can make some pretty crazy sounds with two operators, I know that from experience, but what I wanna use it for is making bass lines. I wanna audition some sounds. All 
right. So I think I've played with the sound enough that I feel like I've created something that resembles a bass synthesizer, which is what I wanted. So I want this track to actually be 64 steps long. So I'm gonna hold function, hit page, and then I'm gonna hit page three more times until the length reads 64. So I'm gonna live record some music. Now I'm in unquantized live recording by holding record and hitting play. If I hold record and hit play again, if I tap it quickly, I can move through unquantized and quantized live recording. I would actually like it to be in quantized live recording, as it's very helpful. Okay, so I like some of that. It was an interesting little bass line. I'm gonna move on over here, and I'm gonna adjust these notes. So I don't like how long it waited there, but I do like these notes. So I'm gonna copy this by holding it and hitting the record button, and I'm gonna paste it over here and here, and we'll see how this sounds. I'm going to change the retrig on this one so that it retrigs very quickly. Now, if I hold a step down, I can adjust any of these parameters and it will be remembered into this moment in the sequence. Cool, I'm liking this so far. Let's hear how it sounds with some reverb. The model Cycles has two effect sends, a reverb and a delay. Both of them are stereo and they both sound awesome. No kidding. Now, if you want to adjust how the reverb sounds, you can turn the reverb size here and this is just making the decay of your reverb really big and it goes all the way to infinite. So you can have it never fade if you want. Um, I'm gonna leave it pretty high, so around 100. And then if you want to adjust your delay time, you can do that here. I'm gonna bring it up to 48. It's a number I like from my Octatrack. If you want to adjust the delay's feedback, you hold function and turn this knob, make it a big delay. And if you want to adjust the reverb tank, low pass or high pass filter, hold function and turn the reverb knob. But I'm going to leave it the way it is. Let's listen to this bass line with some reverb on a couple of the notes. I'll put it on that uh, re-triggered note. Maybe I'll put some delay on this one. Cool, I'm liking this so far. Let's move on to our chord track. Hold track, select track six. The reason I did that was just to show you that you can select your tracks without auditioning them, which is super useful if you're in live recording and you wanna to move to another track. Go out of record mode. So what's important here is that we turn up the volume a little bit because we need this chord to be louder than our other tracks so that we can pick a chord that goes with our track. By default, these chords are minor chords. If we want to adjust the values in our chord synthesizer, which is a really powerful feature on the model cycles, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the shape here. So shape is the quality of your chord. This is where you adjust whether it's minor, major, suspended, whether it's a unison note, major, minor seven. I mean, it has a ton of chords in here. It's quite impressive. And your inversions or how the notes are placed in the chord, what position the notes are in to make up the chords, that's adjusted here in the color knob. So if I wanna change the quality of this chord, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the shape here. So it says MAJ seven, that means it's a major seven. So what you'll do when you're using the chord synth, if it's the last track that you're working on, as it is for us right now, is that you'll press play and let your pattern play. Find your root note of your sequence. This is just the easiest way to get this done. So for us, it's gonna be C. So we can just hit one, 
then move through the shapes, the different qualities of the chord until you find one that works with your sequence. So after playing around with this for a little while, I found the chord that I want to use in my sequence. It's a minor sixth. So I'm going to hold record and hit play and just trigger this a couple times. And even that simple sequence of just that chord repeating across the 16 steps works very well for the sequence. But you know what? I want to live record some adjustments to this chord. Or maybe I'll use the LFO. Let's talk about the LFO for a second. So you have an LFO on every track and we haven't used it yet. I'm sure with some of the presets that we grabbed, we have been using the LFO, but I haven't demonstrated it to you. So what's cool about the LFO and why I love the model cycles for the way that the LFO functions is that all you have to do is hold down the LFO button and turn a knob. And it immediately connects your LFO to whatever knob that you've adjusted, which is so fast and so easy to use. So I want this LFO to go to the sweep knob. And what's hiding in sweep inside the chord mode is actually a wavetable that's playing along with the four operators of the FM synth engine in the model cycles. So I'll hold the button down and turn sweep. And you can see that they've connected now. And you can also see it here on the screen. And now I can turn the depth up. And it's having a really strong effect right now, partly because the multiplier is up times 16. So I actually don't want the clock of the LFO to be multiplied like by that much. And the clock for the LFO comes from the BPM of your track or of your project that you're working on. So it's four times the BPM, which sounds pretty good. So I'm going to choose that. But for the wave, I'm actually going to take the envelope. And the reason I'm going to choose the envelope, besides that I think it's really useful in designing sounds, is that it needs to be talked about so that you know that this exists. There is an extra envelope in your model cycles, and it exists inside your LFO. And it's the same on many of the other electron boxes. It works that way, but this does all the work for you. You don't have to like set it up in any way. You just select envelope and it will only cycle one time per trigger, which works exactly like an envelope. It is a decay envelope and it allows you to attenuate vert how much of that is going to a target. So you can modulate things in a positive or negative fashion via your LFO. Okay, so now that we know that, we know that that exists, let's use it. So I'm actually gonna use that LFO shape or the envelope to trigger the sweep, and this is how it's gonna sound. I think it sounds really cool. I've done it before, so I knew it was gonna have a nice effect. I'm also going to turn up the reverb on this. Maybe even a little delay. So here's a good time to do a temporary save. Hold function, hit temporary save. Actually, you know what? Now's a good time for you to save your project. Go into the setup menu here, select project, press down on the project you're on, and select save. Cool. It's, for me, it's named new, and it will be for you, and I'm actually going to leave it that way. Yes, save project. Awesome. Now we really are safe. We can work on anything at this point. So remember to save your projects, really important. So we have a temporary save of our project by holding function and going into our temporary save area. And now we can adjust this track if we want and try some different ideas. Now I don't like what I've done. I like how I had it before, so let's return. Function plus pattern reloads it. Okay, now that we've created six sounds or we found six sounds for our track, let's go ahead and save our kit because you can save kits on the model cycles. So what we want to do is hold function, hit the drum button here or the instrument button, and then hit function again. And you have the option to save a preset, save a kit, or create a folder. And these are three different things, but they all do very similar things. Right now, we're going to save the kit. We hit save kit and we can name this kit. Hold function, press function to bring up this keyboard here. And we're just gonna call it kit kit because it's easy to do. Kit kit. All right, press the blue encoder to save it. All right, kit kit is saved. 
Now what we can do is we can actually reload whole kits. So if there's multiple kits saved with different instruments that you saved into the kits, you can grab them anytime you want. You can grab just a couple instruments from the kit or you can grab all the instruments from the kit. Let me show you how to do that. So it's not gonna do any damage to our project by doing that because we just made the kit from our project. So it's a good time to do that. Hold function, hit the instrument button here or the, or the preset menu is what it's actually called. And then hold down the blue encoder and it brings up this load folder, rename folder, delete folder, or send as sysx. What we actually want is load folder, but we wanna do that on kit kit. So hold the blue encoder, load folder, load the whole folder. Cool, we got it. It made no adjustment because we had saved the kit from this pattern. Now we need to talk about a few more things before we're done. Our pattern's pretty much complete. So I wanna save a preset with you so that you can save your first preset. I'm gonna use the synth track that we made on track five or the sound that we made on track five and save that. I'm gonna hold function, hit the preset menu, hit function again, hit save preset. And I'm gonna name it uh, just a bunch of random letters. And maybe I'll use it again, Nerpiders. Okay, save it, done. Okay, now we have that saved in our presets and we can recall this anytime we want. It's literally that simple. Now what you can do is you can create a folder. You could have a folder of your kits. You could have a folder of presets that you like. And then you can also load that whole folder as I showed you before. And that's some cool stuff that you can do on the model cycles that I think is an underused feature. So try and take advantage of it if you can. Okay, so I think we wanna perform our pattern, right? Like, let's see if we can do something with this. I'm gonna hold function to go into the mute menu here. So now I'm gonna mute everything but this kick drum and this bass line. I think I can perform with that. Starting from that position is what I mean. So one last thing before we perform, I'm gonna show you the hidden mute mode that I just recently discovered existed by stumbling across it. To get into the secret or hidden mute mode that exists or bug, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, whatever it is, I like it and I don't want it to go away. So don't squash that bug if it's a bug, Electron. So hold function and hold down the settings menu, but hold it down, like don't just hit it once. It'll bring up the menu to save your pattern. And so this is a good thing because you can save your patterns into your projects and recall your patterns. So if you're doing temporary saves, messing stuff up, or accidentally temporary save twice, you can just recall your pattern from memory. But I'm not gonna actually save the pattern, I don't care about it. I'm going to leave that menu and see how these mutes stayed up. So it's really convenient uh, because you can mute and unmute now and it stays there. So I don't have to hold the function button while I'm doing this, even though I do want to use the function button and this mute mode will vanish after I hit the function button. So that part's a little frustrating, but it's easy to recall that and pull it back up. I'm gonna let those be muted. <laughs> this is how I'm gonna start. Kick, baseline.
right, so I was having a little too much fun there and it went a little bit longer than I intended to. I think I covered most of the things that you would need to know to get started with your model cycles. I hope these videos are helpful for you. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. Tell me what you like, what you don't like in the comments. Share this video with your parents so that they know how to use a model cycles for when the apocalypse comes and model cycles are the only things that work and bring joy. Share this video with your dogs and your cats. Share this video. Share this video.